Hello, this is Brit Jets PSX Tips, the Aerowinx PSX 747 desktop simulation. Today, one of two videos on the 747 400 pre flight using British Airways procedures. This one will be from cold and dark all the way through to the pre flight checklist. Welcome to Gary Oliver's PSX powered Boeing 747 sim. This video then about cold and dark all the way to the pre flight checklist. Uh, I'm going to run through it as we would do for a normal flight crew operation. And the essence of this is managing your time. Typically you'll only have maybe 30 minutes or maybe 40 minutes before you walk through this door until you actually push the aircraft back. So we have to be efficient. We don't test everything to destruction, we do what needs to be done. The simulator at the moment is set up cold and dark, we've just got external power on. So as I walk through the door, let's talk about what I'm going to do. Well, as I walk in, the first thing, of course, is the, the, the initial roof panels. There are some little bits on here you might want to check, flight recorder and so on, and obviously check the circuit breakers are all in. Before we power up the aircraft, we want to make sure it's safe. There are various types of names for the checklist. One would be a safety checklist, one would be an electrical power-up checklist. So I'm going to run this one, and basically what we do is we make sure switches are in the safe position before we power them up. So battery switch on to start with, standby power to auto, and now we've got a bit of light. Hydraulic demand pumps off, safety. Windshield wiper selectors off for safety. Alternate flaps off for safety. The landing gear lever down, flat position, and the flap lever agree. So we're not gonna hurt anybody now. And now I can establish proper external power from the two sources that we've got. The left one is the important one because that powers the ground handling buzz which is used for shutting the cargo doors. But always a good idea to have both available. So the left external power coming on now and the right coming on now. So the aircraft is now powered up. Before I run off and walk around the aircraft or any of the other things I want to do, I just make sure the aircraft's okay to leave. So that would be switching on the three IRSs to align, sorry, to nav. They're now winding up because they're going to take a while. Um, check the ICAS. Lots of messages always. Uh, just watch for anything unusual. That looks perfectly all right to me. And you might think about whether you're going to put the APU on to give the aircraft a bit of air conditioning. So that's basically it from the start. I'm happy with that. If the passengers were going to board, I'd also put the emergency exit lights to arm. So I know the passengers can now board safely. And I will now go off and do anything else I have to do and come back later to do the scan checks. Okay, now I am in what you might call the P2 seat. Um, P1, Captain today is going to fly the aircraft, so I'm the P2. I'm going to finish up as the non handling pilot. So I'm going to do the P2 duties on the ground. And there is a scan flow. I do my bits, when he comes back, he's going to do his bits. So start on the overhead panel and simply go down in a line. That's one line, second line, third line. I would do that. Then my scan of the MCP starts here to there. Then I start on my right hand side, get my switches where I want them, make sure everything's correct here, come down through the gear lever, ignore the FMC because that's not my job, all the way down and then I am doing all this panel except for the captain's comm panel which he will do. So that's my scan plan. The P1 when he comes back, the roof's done for him, he will do this bit as far as there, then he will do his left hand side coming down through here, through the FMC, all the way across the throttle pedestal then he will do his comms panel and actually he will also check that the trim controls are in the right place. So that's the scan flow for the two individual pilots. Alright, the P2 scan checks in a bit more detail. The overhead panel then, just to make the point here, EEC engine controls for example, in theory what you're supposed to do is make sure they're in normal. But if you've missed one, it'll tell you on the ICAS, so it's not a problem. But basically we're making sure that the switches are flush. So starting with the IRSs, we know that. We're going to use the APU later, so we're not worried about APU power. These are all flush. 
coming down the hydraulic pumps are off um, moving up we're then on emergency exit lights well we've already taken care of those the fire switches will be in no need to worry about those switches tend to be vertical if they're in the right place so vertical 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 make sure your two fuel cross feeds here are selected open like that and the rest of the pumps are off wing anti-ice on this particular type will be in auto and again we have flush switches and vertical switches coming up to the top again passenger oxygen leave it alone your damper in op doesn't mean it's broken that will come online when the first irs aligns with the position Pressurisation. It's worth checking that these two manual switches are proud, not pushed in manually. And then vertical again. Vertical switches flush. Half cargo heat stays off because it will be bleed for engine start that we don't need. Vertical for equipment cooling. High flow and pack reset would normally stay off. The pack switches are off at the moment. The isolation valves quite important to check. They are flush and again we have uh, flush switches for the bleeds and lastly just make sure all your switches here are back if that's your if that's your aircraft type system and as you require here you might want to put the nav light on ready for PSX start so the P2 checks at the top here on the MCP just press engine and come down and look at the ICAS upper ICAS you're checking for any exceedances here have a look at the memos while you're at it and then come down exceedances here oil quantity should be at least 20 quarts and um, then back up again to the status coming down make sure you haven't got any refills here on the hydraulic quantity and the oxygen pressure for crew and passengers should be sufficient typically about 1800 but could in some cases be as low as a thousand depending on where you're going and of course check there are no status messages that might be getting in the way later on once you've done that come back up to the top again set up your FS here how you want it that will come later on in the departure briefing probably coming along to the right switches all vertical for the source select switches clock time right vertical vertical switches flush FMC if nobody's put the IRS position in then put it in pause in it and put the GPS position in job done that's the end of that bit miss out the pedestal come down here and now start the scan this way that's the captain's panel a cars there observers panel if you need it seat belt signs should be off if you're refueling which we are at the moment uh, coming back up weather radar tilt seven up weather or weather turb your choice select it to auto a cars will have a play with later rudder and aileron trim where you need it and then coming back up here to the P2 comms as you set them up. So microphone selected left, intercom, probably the cabin, and you'd probably put an 80s frequency or something on the appropriate box. And then down to transponder, just make sure you are on standby and typically 2000 at this stage. And then the big one, which would be picked up later if you missed it, would be auto brakes to RTO and make sure that the memo message applies at the front. And there we are. And just out of interest, while I'm here, if I look at the fuel page, you will see that we are refueling at the moment because the pre-select is 72 tonnes for our flight, the fuel going up at the moment. That tells me the aircraft is still being refueled. OK, so the P2 duties on the centre CDU. We're going to use bar cars now. Uh, flight in it, I've already populated 177, the flight from Heathrow to Kennedy, so that's done. Uh, selecting some weather before we go then here we go we've got the options here for EGLL which I've already put in Met, ATIS and let's select a couple of the others for fun and send that off the request is sent and that will then appear after a few seconds under the messages section under stored uplinks and I'm going to have the new one here there we go and there is the latest weather 2208, 180, 260, 10Ks, etc. Temperature 181019, and if I wish, I can print that and it will come out on the printer on the pedestal here. So I've now got my weather information, and we know we're going from 27 right, so we'll continue with put the information in. ACARS menu again, uh, under bar cars, performance request. 
and now we simply put in what we need for this EGLL uh, not wet so it's not ticked and the wind was 2208 temperature was 18 nice warm day 27 right for departure we don't need anti-ice obviously and we're below the pack soft weight so that's alright and the QNH1 Zero one nine set. There are two pages to this performance request here. So if I go to next page, I've now got the option of putting in my takeoff weight, which off my flight plan was two nine five point six. So that goes in here. Two seven right already in. There may be performance corrections if there's something wrong with the aircraft. It's fine, and pressing sent, and that will eventually come back as a performance printout. So I've just got in from my walk round now and I'm about to start on loading my side of the scan check and the FMC loading. Uh, and Mavis, hello Mavis, what can I do for you? Hi, um, can we get some air conditioning? It's getting a little bit hot down the back. Getting a bit warm for yeah. you, is it? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll do your deal Mavis. Can I have an, another cup of your tea please? And if you bring tea within the next couple of minutes I'll give you some nice cool air conditioning about that. No worries. Good deal, thank you Mavis. She's got a very deep voice, hasn't she? Okay, right, sorry about that. Um, Yes, so my scan checks, again, vertical on the source selectors, uh, coming along the top here, and actually what I'll do, I'll, I'll look after Mavis. I'm going to start the APU now, typically about 20 minutes before departure, actually, just to save fuel, but you, obviously, you know, if you're just using a PC, it doesn't really matter, does it? If you do that, I recommend you clip something in the way, like this, to remind you to switch the packs on, because it's not much use starting the APU and then forgetting to switch the packs off afterwards, switch the packs on afterwards. So that's that. APU's on its way. If I come forward here, uh, you will see uh, on the status page the APU is running up. And once we get to 99% uh, on the N1, we will get APU running on the top. Ding. Good. Now I'm going to put the packs on. Like that. Temperature down to keep uh, Mavis happy. And I'll get rid of my little reminder there. Oh, Mavis, bless you, darling. Thank you very much indeed. She's a good girl. I would just check my FS is selected how I want it. Uh, hectopascals for London, uh, map display as you want it, VORs or ADFs pointing as you want. Speed up here would be your expected V2. You may have a table which gives you the uh, flap 30 V2, uh, which would work for the performance as a cross check, runway heading, and in this case our SID altitude. Just leave it like that and then move on to the next item. So the centre pedestal is my job, speed bay, throttles closed, cut off, stab trims where you need them, flaps are up, takes three seconds. Now I would set my comms panel up as I require here and then my trims in the centre, make sure they're neutral otherwise things get very exciting on takeoff and then forward to the FMC. FMC then, start with the IDENT page, make sure you've got an up-to-date route in there, any other factors here you need to change, and if in doubt, go to 6 right on the FMC every time for the next thing you need to do. UTC is checked, position is in there, down to route, and we have EGLL, which actually I've already put in on a previous take, KJFK, flight number is already in there, and the company route will be EGLL, KJFK01, in company route, say not in database, which you expect to see, send the request. Now on the real aircraft this might take a couple of minutes or even longer to come back and it will take a little bit of time here as well. So what I'm going to do is in the meantime go to the init ref page and start putting in some numbers here. So zero for the cost index, the reserves today will be 6.4, it says this, that's very low but we'll have it. And the fuel 75.9 is what we requested that's on. Leave these two fields blank and the cruise altitude we're going to initially is uh, 3, sorry, I'll go for 340. You see we've got the route up link, I'll just clear that, put my 340 in there and now I will go back to the route page again and I can now load that route up link. It just saves a bit of time. Tum -ti -tum. You see the page is incrementing there and now I can 
Again, six right, activate and execute. Now, if I just look at the route now, you'll see on page two that we are direct to the CPT VOR. Now, I know I'm going from two seven right, so go departures a right. You see how perfect it, by the way, there was the next six right. So I've jumped the ship, jumps the gun slightly, but saved a bit of time. Departures arrivals, two seven right, and it's a Compton three Foxtrot departure. Execute it. Now go to the route page again and make sure on page two that the Compton, after Compton, would be Kennet and just basically connect things up as you would normally. Now while on the route page, this is a transatlantic route and there will be a position at the start of the ocean. Now Resno, I happen to know, is very close to the start of the ocean. I could put that information in later because I might well get a reroute anyway. As long as I've got something at the end of it which says KJFK, then the FMC will give me a reasonably accurate figure. Good. Perf in it then, as you see, takes me through to the thrust limb section. And we're going to leave this thrust limb page blank because we're going to do a critical data entry with our helpful co pilot shortly. On the takeoff page, again, six right, flap 20 for our takeoffs in VA, and my engine out, Axel, I'm going to make 1,000 feet. Depending on your climb out configuration, you might change the thrust reduction point and so on, but basically that's how you'd leave it. Notice you've got the pre-flight page there telling you what is remaining to be done. Perf in it is there because we haven't put the weights in yet. The only other thing you should do is go to the index page and go to approach and make sure you haven't got a flap speed in there, otherwise that will appear on your PFD for departure. The other thing you can do, having put your route in is uplink some winds to it by sending the request like that and waiting for that to come through and then when that arrives you can activate that for the appropriate legs. And I think that will do for our initial FMC setup. I'm pleased to say uh, Gary my co-pilots finally joined us in the flight deck having chatted up Mavis for the last half hour no sense of urgency this bloke however he's here in time and we're now going to do the bit we do together which is the critical data entry this is the bit you've really got to get right putting the numbers into the box so Gary we've got the load sheet here right and here we've got your printout for the performance and we've got the weather so the idea is stick the whole thing in the box so I'm going to do the talking and you're going to do the typing okay all right? so um, if we go to the init page uh, we need to put the zero fuel weight in and from the load sheet I read to you the zero fuel weight is two one sorry two two zero exactly two two zero exactly the fuel we have on is what we want gives you a gross weight of two nine five point eight and that should be equivalent to our present taxi weight which is two nine six and a bit yeah which makes sense within a couple of hundred kilos right yeah. so we both have that information in both our um, FMCs and now we're going to go to the thrust limb page, decide what thrust to use. So the takeoff weight, Gary, is uh, 295.6. Okay. So on the performance table, you can have a read. Oh, I'll have a read. You want if you can get that. Uh, many. 296 tons will be 61 degrees as a temperature. 61. Yeah. And that will give us a derated takeoff. Takes a little while to come over. We're doing a noise abatement departure out of Heathrow, so we go full climb thrust with this one. Yeah. Which comes across to my side as well. Now we go six right again to take off. Now we want to get the thing configured. So flap 20 to a thousand feet, engine out a thousand. Because it's noise abatement, thrust reduction 1000 in there. 1000. Okay, and that's good for that side. And then the speeds from the printout, Gary. Yep. Will oh. be, I make 148. 148157. 157. And the Mac Tau 22. 22. Good. Once you've done that, we have to just make sure everything's gone right on the instrument. So the first thing coming up the upper ICAS, we have DTO of 61. Uh, and then coming across here, what I'm going to do now is uh, set the panel up. So I'm going to go LNAV VNAV, heading is correct, altitude is correct for the SID and coming down to the FMA, V1148, V2157, 
I've got toga armed LNAV VNAV as I require. The initial SID altitude is 6,000 feet. I've got 27 right as my departure runway, which is correct. And finally, just to make sure I've got the right SID in there, a Compton 3 Foxtrot. Okay, the passengers are on, seatbelt signs are on now. We've done everything. Gary and I have discussed the flight in terms of the briefing. More on that another time, I think. And now I'm simply going to make sure we've got everything in place. The procedures are done by completing the pre-flight checklist. So pre-flight checklist, Gary. Okay. Inspection and security. Completed. Oxygen. That's tested 100%. Flight instruments. Okay, I've got a heading of 271, standby 271, 271, 100 feet, 1019. Second cross check. Parking brake is set. Fuel control switches. Cut off. PFD. Okay, V2157, LNAV VNAV are on, 6000 in the window, set. Take off speed. Uh, V1148, same as VR, V2157, set. CDU pre flight. Completed if you're happy, Gary. I'm happy. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Completed. That's the pre flight checklist complete. Thank you very much.